Hi, here we have a Commodore 128D. It's the plastic version. Bought it on eBay, but unfortunately when it arrived, it doesn't work. Now the seller did say it does work, um, and he sent me pictures, so perhaps it got uh, damaged in transit. I'll show you what happens now when we switch it on. So you have it connected up to a Commodore 1084 monitor. The monitor does work. I've checked it with a Commodore 64 and a VIC-20. So we're gonna hit power on now. You hear the fan. The power light comes on, as you can see. However, there's no activity from disc light. And also we have garbage on screen. If I power off and hold down the Commodore key, which should bring it into C64 mode and power it on. we get absolutely nothing on screen. So what I think I'm gonna to have to do is open it up and see if something needs to be reseated. Unfortunately, as it's the plastic version, it's not as easy as the metal one because there's quite a bit of shielding, etc. that has to be removed. It's my first time opening it, but let's give it a go. Okay, so first of all is we're going to unscrew the screws on this. The screws safely in the box. Three and four. So, next step, change the handle. I believe we have to take the screws out of the back. Mains connector goes in. Very much well. Uh, actually, they look like the same screw, which is handy. So, opening this, the drive at the front, you need to just remove this, which just pulls out. So we should have to lift away. Uh, there we have that. And uh, mains is quite jammed as it hasn't been opened in many years. Let's see if we can just move it, maneuver it out. It is a bit dusty to say the least, so I'm just going to give it a quick hoover so it don't get too dirty on the So that's now done. Okay, so here we have the floppy drive power supply and the electronics for the um, drive. So we might as well start disconnecting stuff. All the connectors are different, but there's probably no harm taking the photo anyway, just in case. the number of screws for the drive. This 
for having a magnetic screwdriver is very handy. So you don't drop it and it disappears. These are all the same length. Except they are slightly shorter than the screws for the outer case. So just bear that in mind. Have your own system to organize the screws. Unless you don't actually mix them up. I'm not sure how many there are. So it might be worth bagging and labeling them. Okay. So that removes. That. Not too dusty actually. Just the outer case. So you can remove the electronics the drive. screws and the washers safe if possible. So that's the electronics in the drive. The front of the case has a number of screws, so I've got to take these off next. This one is actually broken. So I should lift off here. Well, this just comes away. As you see, this plastic one here is actually broken. But I'm sure we managed it out that. Now, back to the drive. screws. So the drive then lifts away. So I'm put the drive screws somewhere safe. Now our supply which again has a number of screws. Some of them are quite stiff, but they probably haven't been opened since the 80s. So you might need to give some a little bit of force. Just to be careful, you use a proper screwdriver so you don't actually wreck the head on the screw. Now the last screw I think for the power supply. Thought it was going to be difficult, but there she goes. A bit dusty. Away. Quite a number of screws now. Just going to put these together. Our 
power supply disconnected. So here we then have the motherboard. You can see that. And there's a few screws, so let's go and get start taking them off. Screw at the back is a lot longer. It looks like we have another one here. Caps I can see look fine, there's no bulging. bit of dust so let's give it a bit of a work. Interesting there is one ROM missing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lift up each chip, give it a quick spray with some 100% alcohol, and see how we go. Now that everything's disconnected, I'm just going to connect up the power supply and see if it powers up for it or not. So I just have the keyboard plugged in here. I'll do my video. Power connector is here. It is keyed, so let me go in one way. Power is there. So let's see what happens. So, ah! Well, that's interesting. We actually have a running white gold go 64. Am I sure? Yes. It goes into Commodore 64 mode. So I wonder, was the floppy drive the issue? We'll turn it off again. to hold down the Commodore key and power on again straight into 64 mode it'll be as simple as that power it on again no Commodore 64 key pressed you get the same screen as before but then she goes into Commodore 128 mode Okay. The other thing I have here is a Commodore 64 cartridge. So we want to have international soccer. So plug that in. It should see the cartridge and boot straight into 64 mode. So we'll see what happens. And it has. Copyright 1983. I don't have any joysticks to try it out, but she has booted up. Okay. I'm just going to make sure everything is seated. A couple of the chips are going in a bit further. Uh, 
This is interesting. It's a little daughter board plugged on top with a bit of bodge wire for the character arm. So anyway, that's plugged in. Power up again. And it does work. So by taking the cover off, maybe something was loose and we fixed it. Or there's a problem with the drive and that itself stopped the machine from starting up. Okay, something more we're going to need to investigate. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to connect the just the drive electronics up. So to make it easier, I'm just going to put the power supply back in its place. As you can see, it's got a fan, which is what this hole here is for. So I'll just put that into place there. This is the power here for the drive electronics, and this is the electronic cable. So I'll just put a bit of cardboard here, so I don't want anything short. There's metal underneath. So you connect up the electronics of the drive. Like so. I'm going to connect the power up. Like so. And then we're just going to power on and see what happens. Up but no cursor. And that might be because it's looking for a drive. And there we have. C64. Sorry, the C128 booted. So I'm just going to hold down the Commodore key and power on. And straight into C64 mode. So the drive electronics don't seem to be the issue. So the next stage is the actual physical drive itself. So I'm just going to power it off. <coughs> 